Higher intelligence, in my words, is about paying attention to what is coming and what's holding the whole thing. I'm reading this book with um, a bunch of men, elderly men, um, and the title of the book is How to Forgive What You Cannot Forget. And the author goes into uh, an aspect in her own experience of releasing it to, um, it's a Christian book, so she releases stuff to Jesus in the book. But I realized the wisdom in what she was talking about, it's the higher, re the releasing into the higher. It's like, there is more going on here than I see. So it is surrendering into what was already brought up, levels of compassion, levels of understanding. And one of the things that came up for me that I brought into the, when we were talking about it is, there's always another story. Like whenever we're talking about things that feel like they need to be let go of, we have a story of how it all happened, where we're the subject in it, how it happened to us. But if you're telling that to the to anyone who was involved in the story, they have what was going on for them. And I'm not saying one is wrong and one is right, but just when you're in the higher intelligence, those things make far more sense and are easier to have mercy about to be merciful in your own heart that you only saw part of the picture, to have mercy for the factors that um, you didn't see and mercy for the person who made a decision the best they could. I've been having this experience over the last number of weeks where vibrationally when I'm in, um, in service or in working with what's happening amongst us as a body is we are not where we were. We are not where we were, and we are not where we're going, but we are going somewhere together. And I can feel you in a way, this is not magic on my part. This is just the state of when you pay attention to what's coming to be born, all of a sudden you see people with eyes differently, like they are your teammates, they are your compatriots, they are the ones who are um, allowing you to be a beginner while they're being a beginner and forgiving you before you even make all those mistakes of being a beginner. I still remember when a friend told me not to be afraid of being a beginner because he said, you can't really be good at something unless you begin it. So it's an intelligent thing to say, but I have stopped myself from doing a lot of things for fear of looking like a fool because you will look like a fool when you try to juggle for the first time in public. Do not show me, do not give those to me, Patrick. I could do one, <laughs> maybe two. No, no, thanks. But I remember they were telling me that because I wanted to learn how to um, um, ski behind the boat. Water ski, oh my God. See, I'm so high above my thinking, I can't think. So I'm losing all my words this morning. I was trying to water ski, you know, starting at, Starting that at age 50 is not recommended, <laughs> not by, by the experts and not by me. But, you know, I fell like seven times until I realized, you know, I just can't do it, especially because I had an audience of people. Um, I didn't mind being a fool once, but at, at seven, I was ready to, besides all that water going up the back of your suit is not that pleasant. <laughs> so this experience of not thinking about what's present, not thinking about what's in your heart or your mind, and allowing yourself to be thinking into the possible, thinking with compassion, thinking with mercy. Those are things that seem like nice things to do, but they are powerful things to do. To be compassionate about what's being born. It's like, let's hold our world like the infant we love so much when we see it the first time. Here's my world. Here, here am I, with you being born now. <laughs>